Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dana and today we are going to paint a cherry blossom painting. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, um, probably the whole world too. And recently in the game, they just did the cherry blossom festival. So it inspired me to make a cherry blossom painting, which is why we're doing this today. So it doesn't look exactly like the cherry blossoms in the game, but you know, inspiration can come from anywhere. So just go with it when you get it, right? So this is what we're doing today for our painting tutorials. So if you want to learn how to make this painting, also we're painting on wood today, something a little different, then uh, let's get started. So today we're painting a cherry blossom tree and we're gonna be painting on wood today. Usually I paint on canvas for these paintings, but uh, I always tell you guys you can paint on any surface and today I wanted to show you a painting on wood. Also, I think it would look really pretty on wood in my uh, personal artwork. I like to paint on wood a lot, so um, it's just one option. I had a pack of these wooden canvases already. Uh, I bought them at the art store a while ago and I've just kind of been waiting uh, for a project to use them, so this is perfect, uh, but you can paint on regular canvas and you can paint on, you know, whatever you want. So that's what we're doing today. Use wood. So when you're painting on wood, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. It does behave a little differently than canvas. The paint does soak into it more. There's lots of different ways to prepare wood. You can gesso it first. I'm just gonna use the regular old raw wood today. And um, this does feel like it's been sanded down. It's pretty smooth. Uh, if you are using a piece of wood that you just found, you might want to sand it and smooth it out first. Again, you can look up different ways to prepare it, or you could just experiment, see how the paint behaves with it. Um, but like I said, it will soak into wood a little bit more than a regular canvas, so just keep that in mind. You might want to use a thicker consistency or less water, depending on the type of effect you're going for. So that's what we're painting on today, so wood. You also need something to paint on. I'm using my butcher's tray palette today as usual. Um, but of course, anything that holds your paint and we're using acrylic paints and these are the colors today and I'll list those on the thingy. You will also need some paint brushes and as always, I'm using my cheap paint brushes that I just get at the local hobby store. You can use any paint brushes you have, but I might not even use all of these, but these are some cheap paint brushes. And you'll wanna have some water, so it's a little jar of water to rinse my brushes. And it's only filled up halfway. <laughs> and some paper towels to wipe your brushes on. All right, now that you have your supplies ready, let's start painting. Okay, so for the background of this painting, I wanna keep it mostly wood. I actually think uh, a lot of the raw wood showing is gonna look really pretty, but we are gonna do like a wash of color. Um, so I want it to look kind of like clouds or mist rolling in. So we're gonna do a very light kind of gray wash. Uh, we'll still probably be able to see some of the wood grain through it, so it'll look really cool. It'll look like those old Japanese paintings on wood, basically. So I think it will go as well with the theme. Um, so for that, I'm gonna use a brush to mix up the color, but then we're gonna use paper towel to apply the color. And we wanna do a gray, but just to make our gray interesting, we're gonna use white and a little bit of black, of course. Mix that up. And we're gonna add a little bit of this brown in there just to warm up our gray. We're not gonna go super dark because we want it to be like a light mist. And we're gonna add a lot of water to this because we're gonna do it like a wash, almost like a watercolor. So I'm gonna spray, or you can, if you have a spray bottle, or you can just use the water from your jar and add a bunch of water to your gray so that you get a pretty watery consistency. And then, just so I don't waste this paint on my brush, I'll use it to start. But I'm gonna grab a paper towel and kind of ball it up. And I'm gonna start down here in the bottom. I'm just gonna start dabbing a little bit of paint on here. And we wanna work kind of quickly because it will soak into the wood pretty fast. We're gonna just really lightly kind of buff this in. We want it to be like kind of a fluffy look because it's supposed to look like clouds. So it should be kind of see-through, but it should have like soft like edges. So we don't want it to be like a hard edge, like we're drawing a cloud. We want it to look like it's misty. Thank you. 
does dry and absorb pretty quickly, so you'll start to see your actual result pretty fast. If you want it to be really subtle, that works really well with just like one coat, but if you want it to be a little bit more dramatic, you can keep adding more layers. But I think I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. So for our next color, we're gonna mix up a really dark, like brownish black for our cliff. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this brown and some black, and just mix up a really dark color. Okay, so I want my cliff to come out from the side here. Maybe like kind of a cool, rocky cliff shape like that. It's gonna be mostly like a silhouette, so you don't have to go into a whole lot of detail. Next, we're gonna add our tree, and you can get as creative with your tree as you want. I wanna do like kind of like the bonsai shape where it's like really twisted and curving, just to give it more character, but you know, you could do really traditional tree shape, um, whatever you like. So um, I want it to come out of the cliff and then kind of hang out and make like, like a cool, almost like an S shape. So you can start at the bottom, if that feels better to pull up, or you could start up here at the top and kind of pull down. Um, I usually just start with just a very thin line first, just to get my basic shape. And then I'll add on to that. And remember the base of the tree, the, tr uh, the trunk is gonna be wider. And I'm just using the same brush and the same color that I used for the cliff. But use whatever size brush feels most comfortable for you. And remember it's a tree, so you want it to be nice and lumpy, so it has some texture. And when we get up to the top here, we wanna start branching out. So I wanna have like maybe some branches coming out this way. You wanna keep your branches again nice and like curved, you wanna keep some. I'm actually gonna switch to a smaller brush. I'm gonna switch to this size brush to do the branches. for my branches for now. You can always add more later. I also like to add like, maybe like idea of some roots down here at the bottom. So if you feel like your paint is still really, really wet at this point, you're gonna wanna let it dry before you do your leaves because the leaves are gonna be a lighter color and we don't want that light pink color to like mix in with any of your darker colors. So uh, like I said, it does dry much faster on wood. So maybe take like a five or 10 minute little break for drying. And then we're gonna come back and do the leaves. All right, the next part of the painting is going to be the cherry blossoms all over the tree. Using kind of a bigger brush. Um, I'll probably also use a paper towel. So I'll show you a couple different techniques to make the little fluffy leaves. Now, because we're seeing a whole tree and it's not really zoomed in, we're not going to see each individual blossom, so we don't have to draw each individual flower. We're going to draw or we're going to paint it in more of like a, a texture. 
We're gonna do a, uh, a pink color, a very pale pink. So I'm just gonna find um, a clean area on my little tray here and I'm gonna mix up some white and a little bit of magenta. And you could just leave it like this, but I like to warm it up with just a teensy bit of yellow, or even lighter. And we'll probably do a couple different color pinks in here to get some lighter and darker variations. Okay, so that's my first pink color. I'm gonna have a paper towel on hand, but basically what we wanna do is like a blotting kind of technique. So we're gonna take our brush and we're just gonna kind of dab it on really loosely. and just play around with the texture. Um, if you want it even fluffier, you could kind of dab it with a paper towel, like this a little bit if you wanted. You don't really need to, I kind of like it either way, but that's an option if you want to add even more texture. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my whole tree. Now with this kind of tree, you might wanna leave gaps, like leave some of the branches showing. You don't need to fill it up completely. Have fun with the shapes that you make. And again, I'm kind of going for like that bonsai tree shape. So I'm doing my leaves and or my blossoms in like little clusters. But you can do it however you like. If you were trying to make yours look like the little Animal Crossing trees, you could do like three big, like round ball shapes of leaves. Because <laughs> that's how theirs look. But we're gonna go for this more bonsai looking. You can have a little bit like right in the middle of the tree too. That would look kind of cool because there could be branches there too. So you're gonna want to uh, play around with the colors so you can get some darker and lighter like highlights and shadows. I'm gonna start adding some more pink and start getting like maybe on the bottoms of the leaves or towards the interior of the tree, maybe a little bit of a darker pink and then around the outside go a little lighter with a lighter pink. So I can just add a little bit more of that pink color in there, with that magenta color. And kind of go right over these same areas, add some darker pink in there. Grab some white, add more white. You could even add a little more yellow. Make a really, really light pink down here. I like to add that to like the tops here. We can imagine maybe there's like light. For a really pretty little thing, if you want to have like some little blossoms blowing in the wind, you could jump down to a really small brush. So just go back to like my pink color down here. You could just have like little individual ones kind of blowing off the tree. You could do it with a lighter pink also. To do to finish it off is I'm going to take this light gray mist color that I had for the background and I'm going to put some in the foreground like this is maybe 
on a high mountain and there's a little bit of like clouds or mist in front of it as well. So we're gonna go back to that light gray color. I actually still have some left over, but if you don't, you could just make a little bit more. And again, we want this to be watery, so I'm gonna add some water to it. And we did this with our paper towel in the beginning, but we're gonna start with the brush. So we'll do that same technique where we use our brush. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on here and then use my paper towel. Just have a little bit of that mist rolling in in front. As much or as little as you'd like to do. So really simple, easy one today. A pretty little cherry blossom painting. So perhaps in a future video, I'll show you guys a really cool way to finish off a wood painting with some like resin or clear gloss, uh, but I don't have any right now. So yeah, let me know if you'd like to see something like that. Well, as always, Bella and I would like to thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share it with all of your friends, ring the little bell if you want to be notified every single time I post, and I will be trying to post a lot more. So watch out for that. Uh, I do have new ideas for the channel. Um, also, don't forget, if you paint along with me, please tag me on your Instagram and let me see it. I love to see them. Um, some of you guys have, and uh, that's awesome. And if you have any ideas for what I should paint next, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see uh, some cool ways that you can add a finish to a painting like this, a wood painting or even a canvas painting, um, also let me know that because uh, there's like different ways you can like finish off a painting with like resins and finishes and varnishes and things like that as well. So yeah, let me know and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!